Welcome everybody. Now that we spent so much time calculating what geodesics on a sphere look like, we can reap the benefits of these calculations and study some basic geometry on the sphere. In particular, I want to study some objects that one usually is interested in when studies geometry. So we want to study the following. Um, lines and line segments angles triangles and circles in fact you can study any polygons on the sphere but this will be enough for us so let's begin with lines and line segments so first of all, we discussed this already, that a, a, a substitute for a line or a line segment is a geodesic between these two points, between two points. So if I take two points P and Q on a sphere, then a geodesic between them is part of a great circle that connects them. Okay, so this is a geodesic. Now, this is not just any curvy line between P and Q. It's a particular unique line that is part of a great circle that goes through P and Q. So let's make this as our definition. Um, these definitions are only here to give you some analogs of notions that you know from standard geometry as to how they can be uh, recast in the, uh, on the sphere. So I would say a line segment between two points P and Q on the sphere as two is a geodesic joining them. Clearly you can connect any two points on a sphere by a geodesic, but <clears throat> if the points are antipodal, then there's an extra property that there are actually infinitely many geodesics joining these two points. So when we think of, of uh, these geodesics as substitute for straight lines in Euclidean geometry, then one of the postulates of Euclidean geometry goes out the window, namely the one that tells you that given any two points on the plane, there is a unique line joining them. Such a thing is true as long as these two points are not antipodal on the sphere, but once they are antipodal, you don't have a unique uh, line segment joining them. Okay, line segments are, uh, are, are simple. What about lines? Now, if you think about the line as being a, uh, a, as having infinite length, then there obviously are no lines like that on the sphere because the longest line you can ever get, remember lines would be great circles essentially, uh, would be um, the entire great circle. So it would have length 2 pi. However, if we sort of read this Euclid's uh, interpretation of what the line is, or infinite line is, in a uh, certain way, and he says that its line is something that you can continue on uh, indefinitely, then Great circles are kind of like that because you can, when you start at any point, you can just go on a great circle that goes through that point and eventually you're going to come back to that point, but you can just continue going on around the same circle and you're never going to come to a, to a blockage or anything like that. So I think it's a fair substitute for lines, great circles, whole great circles, not just arcs of them, uh, are, are a good substitute for, for lines. So I would say that, uh, yeah, uh, lines are just great circles. So you have one line here on this picture, namely the equator. Another very interesting notion, once you have line, you immediately ask yourself, what about parallel lines, right? That was one of the interesting and controversial notions in Euclidean geometry. What are the parallel lines on the sphere? Um, well, what are lines? Well, okay, well, how would I define a parallel line? We defined it in Euclidean geometry 
we define parallel lines that li as lines don't, as don't, that, that, that don't intersect. So if we repeat the same definition, so if we define parallel lines as lines that don't intersect, Then what are the parallel lines on a sphere? If you want to think about it, think about it. You can pause the video here and think about that. And I'm going to give you an answer now. There just aren't any. Because any two great circles on a sphere always intersect. So there aren't any parallel lines. If we define parallel lines as lines that don't intersect, there aren't any. There are no parallel lines. on S2. Oh, 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 yeah. What a pity. No parallel lines. But then I look at this picture and I'm like, hmm, you said no parallel lines, but I can kind of see parallel lines here. I mean, this is one line. And what if I drew this? What if I just like look at a, um, a latitude in Southern Hemisphere? I don't know, like 20 degrees or something. Somewhat warm. Look at this. This latitude here keeps exactly the same distance from the equator at every possible spot. Everywhere. This is a line, so this would be a parallel line. So what's wrong with this? Why wouldn't I call it the parallel line to the equator? Do you see what the problem is? Yeah, the green thing is not a line. It's not part of a great circle. In fact, if I picked two points on this green circle, and I was trying to, and somebody told me to travel from one of these points to the other on the shortest possible path, I would not travel on the green arc, because that's not the shortest path. The shortest path is, would be a little bit further, would curve a little bit further to the south. Okay, it's not, uh, you definitely see this and we're going to talk a lot more about it later in the course when you go on the plane and you see the flight map and the, the, the paths on which they fly never look like the straight paths. They always seem like they curve unnecessarily in one direction or the other. Well, the reason is that really this green thing, which would be a straight line on a flight map, is not the shortest path. Because of the curvature of the sphere, there's a shorter one that goes a little bit further to the south. And I'm not really talking about anything new here. I'm not really discovering the wheel. We already know from the previous lecture that the shortest paths are part of geodesics and geodesics are parts of great circles. And the green thing is not a great circle, right? Its radius is not one. Its radius is smaller. So this is not a line. However, it is another object that we are generally interested in studying, namely it's a circle. It's a circle on the sphere because I can define circles if I define them similarly to um, the way you define circles on the plane. Namely, if I say that a circle centered at C is the set of points on S2 equidistant from C so that they all have the same distance from C then look this green thing the center would be the South Pole. And what would be the radius? Okay, there are two candidates, right, for the radius you can think of. One candidate would be, all right, I take the center of that circle and here is a radius. Or another thing would be, well, it's the spherical distance from each of these points to the South Pole. Well, which is it? 
it's the second thing, right? It's a circle on the sphere. And what is the distance on the sphere? The distance on the sphere between any two points is the length of a geodesic. So if I take any point on this green circle and look at its distance from the south pole, it's the length of the geodesic. So it's the length of this great circle, not that thing which is completely irrelevant to people who live on the surface of the earth because they never cut through the earth, right? That is the relevant thing. So this green thing would be a circle, circle centered in this case at S. Um, so circles on a sphere look like circles. A particular type of those circles would be the great circles. But here there's a little bit of a problem, namely these great circles are actually lines, right? So uh, on a sphere you can have lines that are also circles. In particular, the great circles are such. Uh, so a great circle here is definitely a point, set of points that are equidistant from the North Pole. And what is the radius of this great circle? Well, it would be the length of any of these great circles, of any of these arcs. But in the length of the arc of a great circle from the North Pole to the equator is exactly a quarter of the circumference of the great circle. So the radius of the great circle, thought of as a circle centered at the North Pole, would be pi halves. Okay, but now there's again something other pathological about the great circle. Namely, it has another center. The South Pole is also its center. So perhaps the proper way to think really about great circles is there are lines, not circles. However, all the other ones, all the smaller ones, can be safely thought of as circles. Namely, sets of points equidistant from some point chosen on the sphere. Okay, so circles look like circles. The, the radii are not straight lines. They are geodesics on the sphere. Um, and the great circle is kind of both a circle and a line. Um, so let's move on to angles and triangles. So first of all, of course, angles and triangles are very closely related. How would I define a triangle? So a triangle on the sphere are three non-collinear points Now think about what that means to be non-collinear on a sphere, right? That means you do not lie on the same great circle, joined by geodesics. So by line segments. Um, okay, so let's first look at a small triangle. All right, suppose it's like, think about us, right? People living on the surface of the Earth. We're very small compared to the, to the size of the Earth. So um, we just draw triangles that are small. P, Q, R. Okay, the sides will be parts of great circles. However, they kind of look like straight lines, like straight line segments. Okay, and of course, there's nothing really strange about it because, you know, back in the past where people did not know that the Earth was a sphere, they still did geometry and they actually thought they live on the plane. Um, so, on a small scale, if you zoom in onto the sphere, the triangles look like our uh, regular triangles. But let's look at a bigger triangle. Namely, I'm going to pick three points like this. I'm going to pick the point P to be the North Pole. I'm going to pick point Q here on the equator and R on the equator. Okay, and I connect them by these great circles. Arcs of great circles. Okay, that's a tri triangle on a sphere that looks really curvy, yeah? But let's now look at the angles of that triangle. And to do this, I need to talk about, I need to define what an angle between two line segments on a sphere is. Well, we made a definition already when we talked about inversions of an angle 
not necessarily between straight lines, but between curves. In particular, all these line segments are parts of circles. So all we need to define is the angle between two circles in R3. But we can just do it even for any curves, namely, if C1 and C2 are curves, and remember, curves for us means smooth curves, so they have all the derivatives, so they have well-defined tangent lines, are curves in R3 that intersect at a point A, we define the angle between C1 and C2 to be the angle formed by the lines tangent to C1 and C2 at A. So if I want to look at the lines tangent to Q, uh, to, to, sorry, the lines tangent at Q to, to the line segment PQ, which is really part of a circle, and line segment QR, which is also part of a circle, both of these tangent lines will line on the plane that is tangent to the sphere at the point Q. Right? At the point Q, we have a tangent plane. I'm just going to draw a little bit of that plane. So this is a tangent plane. So it's a plane tangent to S2 at Q. Okay? On that plane, I can find the line that is tangent to the equator and the line that is tangent to that longitude that goes through P and Q. And now let's think about what these lines will look like. First of all, the line tangent to the equator will definitely lie in the plane of the equator. So it will lie in the xy plane. If you, just, if, you, if you draw these coordinate axes here to the sphere, the xy, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, then the line that is, that is tangent, so, so the line tangent to the equator is going to lie in the plane xy plane. So it's going to be, if this, if this marker here was sort of the tangent vector here, it would look like this, right? It would always be horizontal. If I sort of go around the sphere, it goes like that. So let's, let's write this down. So um, the line tangent to QR at Q lies in the plane of the equator. Equator, i.e., is a uh, horizontal. Okay, so that line kind of looks like looks like this. I just draw a little vector there. Okay, um, what about this one? Well, let's think about it. When this longitude crosses the equator then the tangent line is going to be pointing exactly vertically downwards. I, a line doesn't point really, but if, we were, if we we're going down, the vector would, would point downwards, right? It will be completely vertical. That, the reason for this is because, you know, you curve away from the, from the axis north-south until you hit the equator and then you start curving towards it. So here at the equator, the tangent line is going to be completely vertical. So it will look like this. So, the line tangent to Q, uh, Q, P at Q is vertical. Okay, so it kind of looks like this, right? We have, the, this is the vector tangent to QR and this is the vector tangent to PQ. So in particular, the, the, the angle between them, so the angle between QR 
and QP is pi halves. It's the right angle. Now let's look at the point R. What happens here? So I have the tangent plane to R right there. And what about these vectors now? Well, think about this longitude. It's again the vector that is tangent to this longitude will still be verti pointing vertically downwards, right? Here it was this. Now I move around the circle and the vector sort of moves like this. It moves around like that, around the equator. It always points downwards. So when I move from Q to R, it still points downwards. So that's still like this. Okay, what about the other one? Well, if I think about the other vector, it always lies in the, in the plane of the equator, so it goes like that. So it still always lies in the xy plane. So these two vectors, no matter where I am on the equator, form a right angle between them, right? They kind of go around like this. So we also get, so the other one, I want it, I'm gonna just draw it like that. Remember, this is not really an obtuse angle. It just kind of looks like this, but um, it's, it's 90 degrees. It just looks like this on the picture. Okay. Let's uh, pause here and continue uh, on the next video.